Energy Management Program at the University of Colorado, Denver. I'm actually based here in Houston, and I've had the unique pleasure of working with Katie and Pete Petro now for, I think, a year, two years almost. It's, it's flown by, absolutely flown by. Uh, the GEM program is proud to help support Pete Petro, and we work with Katie on a lot of initiatives because I think we share a lot of the same mission that Katie does, and that's to develop the industry's greatest asset, which is all of you, develop the workforce. The GEM program's a graduate business program focused exclusively on the energy industry, and what it does, and again, similar to Pink Petro, we use technology to bring this education to everyone. GEM has a hybrid online delivery model that allows energy professionals from around the world to enroll in our program. And in addition to that degree program, what we do is provide free educational resources for the workforce so that you can always develop and grow. And you've probably seen some of our webcasts that we've done with King Petro. And, and that really works with what I think Katie's trying to do here is really connect the global community to be able to help you all develop, help you able to utilize the resources that are out there to really realize what your career goals are, whether you can articulate them now or need help articulating them, and then being able to, to move to that next step and finding the resources that are available to you. I think Katie and Pink Pedro has done that, and they're doing it an amazing job, and doing an amazing job for the industry and for women in the industry to really look at what's out there, connect and see how many truly talented women um, this industry has and how you can rise to the next level. So again, it's been a wonderful partnership. We're going to be partnering with Katie with her world and some of the other events that she has. And so she's given me the unique opportunity to welcome you all uh, this evening to the open house and to her new beautiful workspace. Um, and just to say a few words and say hello. So now with that, what I'd like to do is introduce George Andrews. George is the Associate Dean of Programs at Rice University for the Business School, and he's also going to say a few words. So I have a 14-year-old daughter at home, and recently she came home from the class project, and she plunked down in front of me, and she said, Dad, you've got to see how the disparity between the soccer earnings Carly Lloyd, you know, look at these players, and they're making four figures, uh, four zeros by the number. Look at these male players. Yeah, yeah, that's seven figures. What's going on here? Why is, it, why is this happening? Tears running down my face. She said, you get me, you get me. I said, no, I, I, I just am so happy you're using data to make this case. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went on, you know, as a good dad, and told her why she was wrong, the economics, and you got to think about the fact this is entertainment, and, and supply and demand. And at some point, she listened for a few minutes and she held her brain and said, Dad, I'm not looking for the reason this is happening. I'm looking for what we can do to make it different. And that was that, that mind-blowing moment. What can we do to make it different? And so at the business school at Jones, we think about that. We think about the different things, the competitive advantages we have as a business school in this space. One is that we put out great uh, breaking research on the areas of gender inequality, what we can do in the workplace to make it better. And we have faculty who are constantly thinking about that. And we have something called Rice Business Wisdom. It's a website, if you haven't seen it, where we try to disseminate their kind of moody tone sometimes, the research is a little deep, but down into kind of consumable nuggets, because we're hoping that people in the industry read it so that we can start to immediately make an impact on people's way of thinking in the industry. That's one thing we do. The other we do is, because we've got students coming, is we think about how can we transform students to be inclusive in their mindset and the way they think <coughs> when they go back to work. And so we just hired a uh, director of diversity, Lida Bell, who's here tonight. And she came up, she's put forward a six-point plan that we're enacting that is this plan to think about this being an inclusive place all the way throughout the process. Yes, we're looking for students who are diverse and more females, because we want people sitting next to students who have that kind of thought process. But we also want to convert everyone there to understand how important it is to be inclusive and how important this, this gender inequality is to, to close that gap that, that this is happening. 
But while we're good at that, teaching these students, what we don't do really well, we don't have a lot of domain knowledge, meaning we don't work with faculty, they do, do some consulting, but we're not in the energy space. How many of you guys know Kate? She's a whirlwind, right? You can't get help and get excited when you're talking to Katie about what she's doing. And so we are delighted to be partnering with her because she's got this great domain knowledge about this energy space that she can help bring to our students and help bring to everyone the issues that we're facing and help us think more broadly about that. So we partnered with her and we're glad to be here tonight. We're going to be hosting the next event she's coming to Rice Campus on March 8th. So for those of you who want to come to the next event, we're delighted to have her there. Um, some other things that we're doing, we have a diversity events coming February 10th. So the website will be up next week if any of you are interested in that. As well as a women in leadership event February 10th. Oh, I might have mixed that up. <laughs> January 20th was the diversity event for the female uh, women in leadership in February 10th. So again, we're just really excited to be here tonight. We think that it's important to, to try to bring in all the different voices. Yes, from the business school, there's things we can do, but certainly we want to uh, partner with the people with the corporate expertise and delighted to do that. So I'd like to introduce the most important person, the person responsible for all this, Katie Maynard, who is the CEO and founder of Kate Petra. Amazing at how many people are here tonight. Um, it's an absolute honor to be here to talk to you about one of the things that gets me up every day, and it gets you up every day, and it's called energy. And yesterday, anybody see the news? Come on. It's okay, we're on Facebook. You can all be okay with the fact that yesterday, OPEC came together and actually came up with an agreement. I mean, or not, we don't know, but the last two years, we've lost nearly 600,000 people. Where are my retired folks in the room? There are some. We were critically short on people before this economic event. And when the market returns, we're going to be short really short. So a couple of years ago, I was on an airplane, and you've probably heard this story, long and short of it is, a man asked me why I wasn't at home with my daughter, who, by the way, is that awesome child sitting right over there. Yep, I'm talking about you, Alan. <laughs> I love you. And um, I said, because my husband is, well, what would a young lady like you want to be in a gaunt, dangerous business like oil? And I thought, well, because we make really great money, <laughs> right? We do really well, and what we do is so vitally important. It's a great job, but it's a meaningful role. And so I, he wanted to have all kinds of conversations. Anyway, the long and short of it is I started drinking a lot. <laughs> and I came up with this idea. What if we could like educate people on why what we do is cool? What if we could make energy cool? Because you know the reputational issues we face. God, the last two years it's been tough. Not just economically, but political, all of it. You evil oil people, you, right? I, I've had a passion for helping to make this industry bring its story to life since I started. And I, I learned a lot about that when I was working at Shell and then got the opportunity to go to BP and then when I had the chance to stay in my comfort zone or take a chance to venture into this crazy, like, unknown entrepreneur thing, it's manic, it's insanity, it's thank you, husband, for not uh, divorcing me. It, it, it's amazing. I remember I went home and I told my husband I wanted to start Pink Petra. He's like, excuse me, a website? You want to leave this job to go start a website? That was what the conversation was. And uh, where are my business journal friends in the room? You guys are awesome. Uh, you know, when you give a reporter a story, you tell them uh, the idea you have, and they publish it, guess what? You're on the hook to deliver. So 
literally two years ago, we started this journey. We launched in six weeks, record time of any project I've ever had to do, because when the media says that you're gonna do something, and you say you're gonna do something, and crew is crashing, and people are losing jobs, you're kind of under the gun. <laughs> so we launched, uh, as crew was just completely come into a crash, we launched on International Women's Day, very intentionally, uh, which our two-year official anniversary is coming up March 8th. No surprise there that we're having our second annual uh, Her World Forum. Because I wanted to be a community. I wanted to keep women together. I wanted to involve men. I wanted to, I wanted to say, you know what? I'm going to bring all these great people together so we can connect, we can learn from each other, and we can get that voice out there about what we do. Because... We're in a tradition. We're going to need all forms of energy. But women make up a massive part of the workforce. Our underrepresented groups, the population demographics alone are absolutely stunning, right? So there are four critical things I want you to take away tonight. Irrespective of the current cycles, you have a bad reputation. You're going to do something about that. The second is the demographic lift. Anybody heard of the crew change? It's over. It's, it's over. I, I'm here to tell you that. We studied something called Energy 2021. If you go to energy2021.com, we partnered with KCA, one of our awesome partners here tonight, to look at this study. And they have a copy of the study, a preliminary copy of the study. You can get the results on your way out. But it basically says the talent has retired or it's been gone. See you later. People need jobs, and we've got people who've left the industry. I think they could. However, that doesn't mean that energy stops. So we've definitely got a demographic clip, or what I call the generation gap. The third is the accessibility and cost of training and the pace and development of that, getting people access to what they need. So two folks talk to you here tonight about education. We are all about education. This is a trillion dollar thing. If you're not staying relevant, guess what? You have no option. Opportunity, right? So that's what we aim to do is to really accelerate and give people access to things. And we're not going to create a whole lot of new stuff. What we're going to do is bring the right, right stuff to the community and give them accessibility to it. Give them reach. Use the internet to learn. Earlier this year, we held our her first Her World Forum. Who came? Anyone? Awesome. $26 oil. We threw everybody in the Halliburton building. Broadcast 300 people inside, but 5,000 worldwide logged in. I'm not in an industry that likes to talk and get on speakers and broadcast to the internet, but we did it. Because we need to not only learn and use new technology, we've got to get out there and talk about what we do and be proud of it. So I am so very proud to say that we're a part of that piece. And then obviously we've got the gender gap. It is huge, and we talked about that today. Uh, we've had some guests in town from the World Economic Forum. Where's Renee? Are you here? Oh, woo! Right in front of me. So Renee came in uh, today, but we are collaborating with the World Economic Forum. Earlier this year, 23, two CEOs, 23, said we want to end the gender gap in energy or in oil and gas. She said that at that, and it was a big statement, right? And we're working to look at how, how do we do that, right? How do, we, how do we solve that big problem? But doing that through communities and working in collaboration because the energy industry needs more collaboration than ever. Anybody in here heard about the fourth industrial revolution? It's, yeah, we do, maybe a little bit, it's pretty cool stuff. But it basically says machines, right? Minds and machines, we hear this, these words. You know, productivity, a la job loss, new skills. The world we're in today is so not the world that I was brought up in, and I'm sure all of you, is so much fueled by digital. And that's what we're about, is being digital leaders. Digital, harnessing digital. Connecting people to information quickly so that we disrupt that gender gap. The only thing I don't have on here tonight is careers. 
But guess what? My community told me not too long ago that next to LinkedIn, okay, 98% of them use LinkedIn and consider it a professional community. 90% said that they consider us a professional community and we don't offer jobs officially because our women are finding jobs through each other. And we're gonna launch a careers platform in March at our event because the industry's telling me, everyone's telling me, everybody's nervous because, oh, well, when this comes back, is it gonna be rough? Could no be to pay Penny or Pete, you know? We're not here to rob Peter to pay Paul. I want to change this industry's perception on the outside because we've got to attract new blood in. Because we do use a lot of energy. Our planet uses it, and it needs talented people. And you don't just put it, you know, a, you've got to put qualified people running these, these assets, right? Otherwise, we get into a quality issue, a safety issue, an environmental issue. So I want to change that. And this platform is going to be about competitors taking, taking each other. We're going to encourage industry to go after tech and finance and aerospace. Because there's a lot of talent out there. But they don't understand what we do. Because we don't talk about that. So that's what we're about. I'm so happy tonight. Thank you so much. Halliburton Shell, Jive Software, and KPMG helped me get this off the ground. So between my uh, you know, husband and me and them, my customers, I've been able to bootstrap this for two years. My plea to you tonight is to get involved. I'm a woman-owned business. We are a for-profit enterprise. When I first launched, I got a lot of criticism for being a, not being a charity. And one of my shell colleagues said, because a man would make us a charity? You all laugh, but it's the truth. Women are seen as you know running charitable things. We're gonna change that perception. So we're about changing the workforce and changing and transforming the supply chain. And I want to thank them because they have been amazing. I worked at Shell for a number of years and actually got a lot of rearing around diversity and inclusion. It changed my mindsets. Um, but I appreciate their, their support. Stavis and Cohen believed in me from the beginning. Stavis and Cohen is a great firm that, that is all about financial literacy but teaching people in different ways, because oh my gosh, how boring is it to learn about money, right? <laughs> so getting engaged on topics that are technical or, or you know, uh, lots of words and things. We're trying to shake it up by having, um, working with institutions work like Rice and UC Denver, Lackawanna College up in uh, Pennsylvania, Columbia University's calling. We're getting a lot of calls because we want to really take learning to a new level. And that's what we're about. So I really, really appreciate everything that my sponsors have done to get us to where we are. Uh, there was a question about like, what is she doing? Where is she going? Honestly, in the beginning, I had not a clue, right? I told the newspaper about this great idea that Halbert was like, here, go, go, you got it, you got it, go, go do it. And we built this great community and we built this great foundation and as soon as this industry recovers, because we are on our way, we are that community. We want to be that community for people, for companies, and for industry. At this time, I do want to ask, um, actually someone who used to work with us, shall come forward to make a couple comments. Um, John Curran is actually uh, an engineer by background, and now the vice president of wind and new technologies. I think I've got that right. Um, I'm sure her title changes a lot, right? But um, she